Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Ray the Flying Squirrel here and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos once again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars for the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom, while the Nintendo Switch Remake should be on its way. So, last time, we have essentially did manage to able to continue exploring for the forms of Merry More Town by experiencing buddy forms in the next boss fight, in addition to that, what appears to be buddy forms within the cake monster of any sort that we somehow already defeated that. In addition to that, Princess Toadstool has finally joined in the party, so meaning about the fact that we actually get ourselves the most useful character of the bunch, mainly because of that one specific special ability that she has, which I'll explain more details about that once we get into the actual combat, or specifically, the battle system in mind. In addition to that, we also managed to able to double check on certain areas, including by the forms of that missing enemy that I somehow accidentally missed throughout the forms of the game so far. But every once in a while though, we actually done that particular process no problem. So today, for this video is about the fact that we'll be able to actually- Oh, and another thing too, we did somehow manage to temporarily show off the forms of a group race in Yoshida Isle. And because of that though, we somehow lost, apparently. Probably because of the fact that we somehow wasted a lot of those Yoshi's cookies in mind. But that's okay though, because I don't think there was actually anything you could probably get in there. Aside from the fact that there was actually the special item called Yoshi Aid. Which as a result, that, that allows you to be able to function kind of like the same way as the forms of how it does it for one of those. Well, it might be tricky to explain, because I will... Uh, Pointed out as soon as we're able to actually continue our progressioning for this particular game so far. So, anywho though, uh, today for this video is about the fact that we're being able to actually go ahead and explore the next location, and that's what appears to be Buddy Forms of Star Hill. And as a result, about the fact that we can pretty much say this for sure, we can probably guarantee to be able to actually come across into ourselves our next star piece. So, exponentially speaking though, it's been a very long while since Journey Forms have been, uh, during the caves, or specifically in the mines, during the forms of that particular process of getting the actual, uh, the star piece all by itself. So, either way though, it looks like Gino, he already knows what this particular place is all about. So, but either way though, I suppose we should probably get started to exploring and all that stuff. Now, there's one thing I totally forgot to mention about during the course of in the last video since yesterday, about the fact, no matter what though, is about the fact that there was that enemy called, uh, uh, Torts, which basically is like a sheriff's of the actual boss fights that we've already stumbled across into. Well, they functions like an infinite uh, amount of health, like functionally infinite for the most part. Even though they do have like 100 HP, but there's no way you can able to actually finish them off. So either way, that might be something I would classify for able to know something like this. So, but either way. So, what I'm at though is about the fact that as you can tell, we already come across into yet another enemy encounter that we've already come across into, and same place with the other ones as well as you can see on screen. Uh, the first enemy we've actually come across into is Muki Muki. So as a result, they do have 108 HP, and if you do manage to kill them, you get like one coin, and on top of that, you get eight experience points if you kill them. So even then, and there's also the forms of the stronger variations of some of those familiar enemies, as we saw, ever since you joined the forms of in uh, uh, the forest maze, or presumably Rose Way, as to be more specifically, uh, those stronger variations of certain bandit-like enemies are actually known as um, Sackett, which as a result, they do have 152 HP, and on top of that, if you do kill them, you get 30 coins, which is quite rewarding if you do manage to able to finish them off like so. Although, relatively speaking though, there are a few rare occasions that much like the forms of one of those red variations of certain enemies, sort of like as similar enemies as these ones as we've already fight against, basically they like to run away more often. So either way, in addition to that, I believe you get 20 experience points if you dare manage to able to finish them off. And there's also another enemy called Gecko, which I believe Gecko does have a uh, 92 HP, and if you do manage to kill them, you get about roughly 10 experience points. I'm not exactly sure what, how many coins you do get, 
uh, if you kill them, that's the thing. That's just because the most annoying part, whenever I was trying to able to look on something on my phone, when it comes to the forms of enemy status and all that stuff, well, basically, what happens was, though, is that the actual stupid ad just keeps on blocking my, uh, uh, description for it, which is always feels a bit way too inconsistent at points, especially noticeable that I would love to be able to actually become a lot more expertise when it comes to able to knowing certain uh, status quotes for the sake of the forms of certain enemy encounters that we might uh, come across into. So, oh well, though, bigger cells can be choosers, I guess. So, but I digress. Uh, a few things I want to explain for this point today, and that is about the fact that today's date, of course, the is the 27th of July today, if I recall correctly, in 2023 today. And it looks like about the fact that tomorrow, that Disney Illusion Island is going to be releasing until tomorrow for the Nintendo Switch as an exclusive. So because of this though, we still have no idea what the reviews is going to be like. But I'm sure I might be very curious to know what was going on for the sake of the forms of those reviews at this point. But I'm sure I will uh, try my best able to explain uh, more details about this. Assuming of course that will be on uh, tomorrow. Or perhaps even maybe we'll let uh, Silver be able to actually continue more mentioning about that. Uh, during the course of the forms of Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania for... You know, try to get started with the forms of the Super Monkey Ball 2 Challenge Mode. Because as a result... Because, like he said before, is about the fact that he's probably not going to do Marathon Mode for the sake of the forms of not only for both Super Monkey Ball 1 Challenge Mode, but also with Super Monkey Ball 2 Challenge Mode, because obviously, like he said before, is about the fact that you go through the exactly the same stages again, but with the entire Marathon you have to go through. So because of that, though, he doesn't feel like he was going to try to able to accept this, so... Anyway though, so yeah, for Star Hill, as far as for this particular location, as far as this is concerned, nor to able to go from one place to the other, as there, as you can see, that I believe sometimes though you do come across into tiny stars all over the forms of certain parts throughout the entire area, which basically it actually tells you the forms of certain descriptions for certain wishes, depending on what characters they do wish for. Like, I know for a fact that, well, I should probably explain more details on that in a moment, because here we have another enemy that we can able to encounter with, and that's what appears to be known as Master Doom. So as a result, they do have uh, 180 HP, and in addition to that, they don't drop coins, but if you do kill them, I believe it gives you about roughly 20 experience points. What if I somehow managed to able to get this accurate... Um, you know, experience points number they do have. So, but either way, despite the fact that in the in-game right now, wasn't exactly accurate though, but at least I did manage to try. So, but either way though. So yeah, um, as far as anything else I could possibly explain about this, for the sake of the forms of today's case, and that is about the fact that, well, obviously, since I still continue playing Mario Kart Tour, as to be expected, and as a result, I managed to able to actually get myself not one, but two me racing suits. Recently, thanks to the forms of not only, um, because of that though, I recently got myself my Toadette me racing suits, just because I obviously do enjoy players Toadette in most of those Mario sp uh, spin-off games, like Mario Party, as well as Mario Kart, and especially noticeable with some Mario sports games from time to time. And, uh, also, uh, in addition to that, I was expecting to originally try to able to get myself the forms of, uh, uh, the, uh, Toadette, uh, Sailor, um, outfit, as far as this is concerned. Actually, I'll get to more details in a moment in a second later, because here we have, uh, yet another enemy encounter, which is basically, it's like, uh, a stronger variation of the already existed enemies ever since in the forms of Inner Minds, except now that, uh, it does have a different name. So as a result, uh, that particular enemy, as you saw, that has been self-destruct earlier on, and as a result, that name was Plasra. So as a result, they do have 69 HP, or in this case, a dirty number of that particular health amount. In addition to that, they somehow drop about 12 coins, and if you do manage to kill them, you get about 15 experience points, if I'm assuming so anyway. So, anyway though, I guess that was pretty much about it for the most part when it comes to the forms of the larger amount of enemy encounters you do encounter uh, for the sake of the forms of uh, Star Hill, as a matter of fact, because obviously about the fact that I think, suffice to say as well, I don't think there's going to be any boss fights anytime soon until specifically later on, that uh, once we get to the forms of the next location. So, but either way, 
Because all you're really doing this particular point right there is that, as you can see, we need to be able to activate those specific start flowers as far as this is concerned until you're able to progress for the continuation of the forms of the actual star hill. And as a result, and as, as far as I'm aware, that we were able to actually get ourselves our next star piece. So, that'll be a part of the plan after all, especially noticeable about the fact that at this point in time, once we do manage to be able to get ourselves our next star piece, then obviously we have no idea what the colors are going to be. But I'm sure we're able to try to uh, figure this out until whatever we, uh... Oh, jeez, I did not notice that Mallow did show up right there. I think something tells me that that was a pretty sad wish, as far as depending on that particular emotion, as you can see. That's, um, yeah, I totally get that. So, anywho, though, um, yeah, there's another thing I should probably forgot to mention about something, and that it appears to be about the fact that, remember I mentioned this before, since in yesterday, that, of course, the new season of Futurama is now being released, and in addition to that, there's also going to be a crossover collaboration between... Of course, Fortnite is about to be getting another collaboration, except this time, it appears to be based off from Futurama. So because of that though, yeah, that's what I agree to say about this, as far as this is concerned. Even though despite the fact that I still haven't watched any of the episodes of Futurama, I will be quite frank here. Just because I don't usually rem remember most of the stuff anyway, so... By the way, something's worth noting for is that Star Hill does kind of reminds me of one of those similar vibes as the forms of Mario Luigi Partners in Time for a little bit. Except the fact that Mario Luigi Partners in Time does require a lot of like time travel aspects when it comes to like past, present and all that stuff. But either way though, that'll be a topic for later time. So, but either way, so... Relatively speaking for Star Hill, it's pretty self-explanatory. You simply go from one place to the other, and then once you make your way to, I would say, the third, or presumably the final section of the forms of this entire location, then you should be able to actually come across into, well, if I'm assuming correctly, the fourth star piece. So, yeah, that might be the reason for it. So, yeah, it looks like there was a wish that might be something relates to Luigi. So... Yeah, it's kind of strange about the fact that Luigi never appears in this game so far. Well, aside from until when it gets to the point until in the end game anyway. That I suppose we're probably not going to discuss on that at the moment right now. Because, as you can tell, we've now made our way to the fourth star piece in Super Mario RPG. And as far as I'm aware, the color choice for that particular star, it appears to be purple of all things. We have now got a fourth star piece. I've no idea why I said things a little bit more whispery in the beginning, but that's just because about the fact I was trying to tie myself with the actual familiar uh, lyric uh, jingle, as far as I'm aware. But either way, though, I apologize for that. My cover take is a bit slightly iffy at points because even then, um, yeah. In regards to anything else, though, since we've now got ourselves four star pieces right now so we've only got three more to go now as a result about the fact that we're almost getting very quite close to the point where the fact that the game might start to get a bit difficult to drain out some form or another but that's just because about the fact that relatively speaking as i said before i think relatively speaking though is about the fact that that fourth star piece as we've already gotten through that was the only uh star piece in the game that we don't usually need to defeat the actual boss fight. So because of that though, it's pretty self-explanatory. So here we are onto the next town, and according to the forms of that sinister music in the background, something fills off around here. Specifically, all the townspeople are pretty much, well, ill. So because of that though, according to the actual color of the face, that actually signifies they are having a cold flu or something like that. So as a result, it kind of reminds me of the forms of the actual worst year we've ever experienced, which is of course, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So because of that though, I suppose we're probably not going to mention about that anymore, but either way, let's get into the forms of another topic at this point today, and that's what appears to be about the fact that, re uh, relatively speaking, that we actually get ourselves some more information thanks to the forms of Sonic Superstars recently. Although I'll explain more details about that once we get to the forms of the next location in the game, so... 
Excuse me, I do apologize for that because of that belchiness uh, for a second ago. But anyway, as you can see, we actually stumbled across into ourselves the Fright Bombs as well as Fire Bombs as well as Ice Bombs. And because of that though, I suppose I might as well be back for those until specifically for later on. So for now, let me go ahead and sell certain weapons like symbols and all that stuff because obviously about the fact that I don't think we can get to actually worry about uh, some other stuff in mind. So, either way, though, that must have been sets of things, so... Anywho, though, um, and another thing is worth noting for about the fact, no matter what, though, that, uh, uh, relatively speaking, though, is about the fact that someone said in the comments, uh, journey forms that particular point's worth noting for, and that's what appears to be that Veggie Tales, that the series I haven't exactly watched all that much, though, but I definitely heard about it, especially noticeable because of the forms of certain, uh, uh, topics worth noting for about the forms of certain memes and all that stuff, but I know it's right from the start though about the fact that Veggie Tales is about to be getting ourselves its 30th anniversary treatment for this year, ever since in 1993. So because of that though, um, I'm not exactly a huge Veggie Tales fanatic. I will have to be quite, I uh, have to be honest here. But that's just because about the fact I never exactly watched all that much for that particular point worth noting for. So, but either way, I'm biased, I guess, especially noticeable because I don't exactly remember uh, that particular series as much. So, I must admit that I apologize for that. So, but I digress. Oh okay, yeah, speaking of stuff you related to its anniversary treatment, and that is appears to be about the fact that, well, suffice to say, happy 20th anniversary, well, better late than ever, I suppose, happy 20th anniversary of the release of F-Zero GX for the Nintendo GameCube. Especially concerning about that particular point where, obviously, we have not seen a brand new game installment of uh, F-Zero for a very, very, very long time, Although Nintendo Land doesn't count because it's more likely like an abstraction minigame compilation. So because of this though, yeah, I can't even believe it's been 20 years ago since when F-Zero GX has first came out on the GameCube. So because of that though, oh, and not only that, I think relatively speaking though about the fact that, that obviously certain rumors out there, that they keep on mentioning about the forms of maybe, uh, uh, F-Zero GX might get its remastered treatment on the Switch or something. Well, then again though, it's kind of hard to tell, especially noticeable because despite I still don't usually listen to rumors and leaks all that much though, just because sometimes that's, uh, I just got tricked by the forms of certain, uh, uh, description or something like that. It's especially noticeable with all that particular, uh, punctuation errors or potentially speaking just anything else for that matter so now for what i've played um f-zero gx after 20 years since when it first came out it's pretty cool all things considered despite most people complain about the difficulty because usually most of the time though the game is extremely extremely difficult like relatively speaking though because of the forms of how the fact that you have to able to complete um, you know, certain, uh, missions in the forms of in certain chapters in story mode that you have to be able to complete them on hard mode. Like, usually if you complete the actual certain scenarios on hard mode, and you were able to actually unlock secret racers. In addition to that, though, the Grand Prix in the game also gets extremely difficult for the sake of the forms of two difficulty choices, which are Expert and Master modes, which as a result, it might be a bit too much for its difficulty. So because of this, though, yeah, that might be the reason, as far as I'm aware, that we, have, we haven't exactly got a brand new F-Zero game for quite some time at this rate. So... Oh, and by the way, as you can see, once you talk to this particular NPC, you do able to have the ability to able to purchase some very cool items here and there for certain accessories. Like, for instance, about the fact that with the Experience Points Booster, that actually doubles your Experience Points, if I recall. And there's also the forms of Scourge Ring, which as a result, about the fact that that actually, uh... Uh, decrease your half amount of using the forms of certain specials or something like that. Even though it's a bit tricky to explain, because it's been about quite a few hours ago since I actually have last played this. But I do know for one thing, that once we keep on collecting more of those, uh, frog coins for that matter, I will be back to able to actually buy that one specific accessory, and that is of course, uh, you know, Scourge Ring, because obviously that is the most useful uh, accessory in the game, just because about the fact that you don't want to waste too much flower points if you try to deal with certain boss encounters or anything else like that. So, 
yeah, that's essentially what we're going to be aiming for, especially noticeable, because we still need able to try to hunt down some more um, frog coins, or presumably, though, about the fact that sometimes, though, if I ended up missing quite a lot of those frog coins, I'm not exactly sure how much exactly those frog coins are, but I'm sure that someone said in the comments down below might able to know how many of those frog coins they are. So, but either way, though, I think we're basically done with this town for now, specifically Seaside Town, so let's go and explore the sea. So, because of this, though, I believe something tells me about the fact that we might able to actually start to explore the actual pirate's sunken ship. So, because of this, though, and also there's another shop, thanks to the forms of one of those NPCs and stuff like that, and basically it gives us the forms of uh, certain items, as far as I'm aware, including certain... Uh, weapons as well, so I might just able to actually feel a little bit puzzled about this, especially noticeable because sometimes though, trying to sell stuff is a bit tricky in my opinion, probably because about the fact that, since about the fact that, well, as you can tell about the fact that I'm actually going to be trying to go ahead and aim for uh, sailor shirt as well as sailor pants and sailor cape and stuff like that, but as you can tell, I'm basically running low for the amount of coins I do definitely need for the sake of time, because obviously about the fact that I've already managed able to buy certain stuff, especially noticeable once we get to the later boss fights, that uh, it gets a bit difficult at points, so... But I digress. Um, the next thing I want to mention about, and someone also said in a comment section down below, uh, during the course of in the past few videos ago, for not only for Super Mario RPG, but also with Sonic Frontiers as well. Before I get into more details onto that topic though, yeah, as I said before about the fact that sadly, as I said before, no Sonic Frontiers uploading schedule for today, that's just because about the fact, as I said before, Sonic was very ill recently, so because of that though, hopefully when he gets better, then I'm sure enough he will be back for more of the forms of Sonic Frontiers action, so because of this though, Presumably, of course, until at the beginning portion of August sometime. So, I believe either way, though, I'm sure you might as well be able to be stay tuned for that. So, anywho, though, um, yeah, let's talk about the forms of those. Not only one of those games, but two specific games made by the forms of Game Mill um, Entertainment and stuff like that, if I'm assuming so anyway, that uh, they're working on both of those games based off from DreamWorks Animation. So, because of this, though, yeah, it's been a very, very, very long time since we've last actually got ourselves a DreamWorks crossover game back in 2011 of all things, which appears to be by the forms of, well, as far as I'm aware, DreamWorks Superstars Race Cards, I think is what it says anyway. Again, I must admit that I apologize for that particular pronunciation error with that particular game's title, but that's just because about the fact that I haven't exactly uh, looked upon that game that much, though. But uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, one of those DreamWorks racing games is definitely coming, and as a result, it's going to be called DreamWorks All-Star Kart Racing, with no... Uh, Z at the end. So because of that though, yeah, as a result about the fact that it's going to be releasing on modern platforms, expecting it's going to be releasing on not only on the Nint Nintendo Switch, but also on the PlayStation 4, as well as PlayStation 5, and Windows PC, Xbox One, and finally Xbox Series X slash S. And it was expected to be releasing at some point later this year. No specific release date on that yet, but I'm sure enough that we're able to hear more details about that. Now, as far as I'm aware, they were able to include certain characters based off from not only from Shrek, obviously, but also with the forms of Puss in Boots, and especially noticeable with the forms of, for whatever reason, Boss Baby, as well as the Wolf from The Bad Guys, and especially noticeable that Poe and Tyrus from Kung Fu Panda are also going to be joining the roster. And was he for Stranger enough, though? That's what appears to be about the fact that they, they, for some odd reason, they never actually include any of those Madagascar characters, including uh, certain characters from Monsters vs. Aliens. Although, as far as I'm aware, the only character they do manage to get, and that's what appears to be Bob, from the likes of the uh, inspiration of the forms of Monsters vs. Aliens movie. Because as far as I'm aware, about that particular point where, compared to the forms of in the past card racing games from DreamWorks standpoint, when it comes to video games as far as I'm aware, they usually, the only two things I do remember, which there are 
or actually technically speaking three things I've already noticed. That's what appears to be our, well let's, let's just say um, Ant's Extreme Racing on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, including PC as well. They obviously do manage to include, I would say six playable characters on that particular game, which is obviously Z, Princess Bala, and Azteca, Weaver, and Cutter, and General Manitable, at least as far as I'm aware. Now, as far as I'm aware as well, that there's also another card racing game called uh, Madagascar uh, Cards, as far as I'm aware. And as, as I can definitely notice from that particular character roster, it's unbelievably um, abysmal. Like, for instance, about the fact that they include nine playable characters, and in addition to that, they also expected able to have themselves nine tracks. So as a result, that's awfully small for a racing game that has been released in 2009 in multiple platforms, which is on Xbox 360, Nintendo Wii, as well as PlayStation 3. So yeah, that's seriously unbelievable. Although I will give um, the Madagascar cards uh, some credit for. That's what appears to be about the fact that this is actually technically the first ever card racing game to able to feature 200cc, which is about six years before Mario Kart did. So as a result, but the only thing is kind of controversial for the sake of time is that why could be only done in mirror mode. So because of that though, I just got no words to able to think about it. Although I haven't exactly played uh, Madagascar cards, but I definitely heard a bit, but it's definitely more likely a cash grab to me. So because of that though, yeah, I've got no words, so... Anyway, so as you can see, we actually stumbled across into ourselves the next selection of selections of enemies, as you can tell. That's what appears to be body forms of one of those enemies in particular, which is the forms of uh, Zero Stars. And basically, Zero Stars does have 90 HP, and then if you kill them, you get about 10 experience points, and also they drop 3 coins. So, at least as far as I'm aware. And of course, we got ourselves Blooper, the Japanese name of Blooper as the enemy, not the actual English version. So because of this time, that usually the English version does have a P on it, but as a result, for the 90s anyway, they just call it Blooper. So as a result though, that's the Japanese name of the enemy. So because of this though, it's what I classified that. It kind of feels a bit similar to the forms of how it does it in one of those boards in uh, Mario Party 3, that uh, one of those boards is called Deep Blooper C. So, they can't be bothered able to actually translate that to the forms of a proper English uh, text or something. So, I guess Beggar Cells can be choosers, I guess. So, anywho though, um, for blooper enemies, uh, they do have 130 HP and they drop about none of those coins and exponentially if you kill them you get about 12 experience points and that's about it basically so yeah i guess that's all i can really say about those guys so anyway though oh in addition to about the fact that well as far as i'm aware like i said before there's another dreamworks card racing game called uh dreamworks sake uh superstar cards as far as i'm concerned and they somehow managed able to boost the character roster up to 12. So as a result, at the very least, they do have 12 characters as opposed to 9 playable characters, unlike in Madagascar cards. And as far as I'm aware about the fact that that game is also a cash grab, and even feels a bit too floaty and stiff from the likes of the forms of that particular, you know, DreamWorks Superstar cards game as far as that I'm concerned with. So maybe exponentially speaking though is about the fact that what I found is a little bit strange and that's what appears to be about the fact that Game Mill Entertainment, you know the developers who also made uh, Nickelodeon Cards Racers as far as I'm aware because that's kind of weird honestly what if they, they managed to able to go for that decision for that particular exactly same developer in one of those different franchises in general. So because of this though now, as far as I'm aware, not only do they are going to be announcing buddy forms of DreamWorks All-Star Kart Racing on multiple platforms, they're also going to be making a 3D platformer as well, which appears to be buddy forms of a Trolls game. Specifically, DreamWorks Trolls Remix Rescue. And because of that though, what I've noticed is going to be also going to be releasing on multiple platforms, so... Yeah, that's as far as I'm usually guessing for that for the sake of time, so but either way. Now, 
yeah, let's talk about the falsely enemy, the next selections of enemies that we might come across into, as you can probably can de definitely tell. Now it's what appears to be buddy forms of those weird jellyfish looking creatures called, uh, Lucos. And Lucos do able to have themselves 220 HP. And then if you kill them, they drop about 3 coins. And if you do kill them, you get about 20 experience points, if I'm assuming so anyway. So, but even then, yeah, that's what I can really think about. But there's also another enemy that we can able to stumble across into, but it seems about the fact that I don't think we can probably come across into that anytime soon. So because of this though, yeah, this is going to be quite of a journey to able to actually just go from one place to the other. But relatively speaking, on the actual sea location itself, it doesn't seem it's going to be that long, so it's just about the fact that you go through several sections. And every once in a while, as you can see, we actually stumble across into certain whirlpools, which basically that allows us to be able to actually just go underwater. So because of that, though, yeah, you probably get the uh, get the idea of how that's going to be turned out to be. So, and as you probably already know about the fact that we've already got that particular frog coin for one of those chests that we did open up. So, yeah, that's why I could really say bye. So, anyways, let's talk about the forms of the actual update. Uh, for the sake of the forms of specific descriptions they did came up with, from the likes of the forms of Sonic Superstars, and they set the description about the forms of certain colored emeralds you're going to be collecting, specifically certain chaos emeralds do have their specific abilities. Like for instance, about the fact that as you can tell, uh, the blue chaos emeralds does activate the avatar, which allows you, uh, which allows you to able to create clones of your character and send them speeding across the screen to defeat enemies. So, technically we've already saw that from before, thanks to the forms of one of those uh, trailers for the likes of Sonic Superstars on the forms of Summer Game Fest, so yeah, that might be the reason for it. So, but either way, um, as far as the Red Emerald, as far as I'm aware, uh, the Red Emerald allows you to become a bullet, so basically what that does is that that blasts your character in a specific direction. So, yeah, that's not much else to say about this for the most part. And, uh, actually I'll get to more details about the forms of another, uh, Chaos Emerald power that it does, did somehow revealed. Uh, as you can tell, we actually stumbled across into a yet another enemy, which appears to be known as Mr. Keeper. And Mr. Keeper is basically it's like a green colored variation of uh, one of those cheap, cheap enemies that you find. Uh, ever since in uh, Crow uh, Sewers, at least as far as I'm aware, uh, Mr. Keeper does have 133 HP and they drop about 2 coins if you kill them. And if you do kill them, you get 8 experience points. So, yeah, that's about it basically. So, but either way, um, I should also mention about this as well, as you can definitely already know, it's about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, when it comes to the forms of another Emerald Power, they did somehow revealed that, uh, I've already mentioned about two of them so far, and for Psychon, or specifically Silent Emeralds, specifically the Light Blue, uh, Chaos Emeralds, what that does is that this actually activates water, which technically we've already known that ever since the new forms of the actual playable demo, on the forms of in uh, the Summer Game Fest, as far as I'm aware. And what that does is that that allows uh, characters can move easily, traverse underwater areas, and even climb up waterfalls. So, yeah, that'll be pretty handy, though, especially noticeable you don't want to able to drown during the forms of some sections throughout. So, anyway, uh, the next uh, Emerald, which appears to be the Green Emerald, uh, basically, this allows you to able to actually just do grow vines where from where the character stands to help you reach new areas. So if you're having trouble just trying to able to find the special stage rings, then obviously if you do get yourselves a green chaos symbol, that will be the most useful uh, abilities for the sake of the forms of the chaos emerald powers. So yeah, I guess it's that. Uh, the next Chaos Emeralds will have to be by the forms of a Purple Emerald, and basically that reveals certain objects like hidden platforms and rings. And also in addition to that is about the fact that the developers thought about players having a challenging time knowing when to use the power and took it uh, into uh, consideration. So, oh, and another thing about the forms of uh, the Green Emerald. Uh, the Green Emerald is actually called Ivy, so because of that though, it just grows the actual vine depending on what you're standing on. It's kind of similar to the forms of how it does it on certain uh, 2D Mario games if you come across into certain blocks. 
they do manage to able to create a vine, so you can able to climb onto the actual vine to reveal certain secrets. Oh, and another thing too, with the forms within the Ivy, uh, it can direct where they grow, and if you're playing on co-op, uh, your teammates can use your Ivy to reach new areas as well. And uh, as far as I'm aware, for the purple emerald, is going to cause it vision, because obviously it does manage to reveal uh, hidden platforms, including hidden rings as well. So yeah, I guess that's that. And the next color emerald, which appears to be the yellow chaos emerald, and that actually brings us slow. Which basically what that does, it just slows down everything on screen. So it's very, it's kind of reminds me of the forms of the speed gear for the likes of the forms of Mega Man 11. So because of that though, yeah, it does kind of reminds me of that. And in fact, kind of thing about it though is about the fact that one thing I will admit that Sonic Superstars does remind me of like a similar vibe as Mega Man 11, except the fact that obviously about the fact that you go through like brand new zones and stuff like that so yeah you probably get the idea and finally exponentially with the white chaos emeralds what that does is actually called extra meaning about the fact that depending on what characters you're going to be selecting uh for instance if you use sonic uh you do get yourselves a homie attack just like new forms of how it does it in not only in Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1, and same applies with Episode 2 as well, but also with the forms of Sonic Generations as well, in one of those special skills you get in Sonic Generations. So, kind of weird to be able to actually have that, but regardless of such though, I think it might felt a bit easy mode or something like that. And as far as I'm aware, for Knuckles, can have the ability to punch, and for Amy, does able to activate the hammer throw. And finally, Tails can perform a tornado spin. So because of that though, yeah, if you do get yourselves a white chaos emerald, and depending on what characters you're going to be selecting, they do have some specific abilities. So because of that though, if you're having a hard time, if you do manage to able to get yourselves a white chaos emerald, do yourself a favor and snag it. Well, assuming of course about the fact that if the game actually comes out, that's the thing. So... And finally, most notably though, is about the fact that, as to be expected, if you get all 7 Chaos Emeralds, you get the ability to become a super version of specific characters. Like, for instance, each character can able to turn into super, and each character turns invincible and becomes faster with rings depleting over time. And also, about the fact that, while well, each character... Well, usually about to be speaking, I've already mentioned about this, didn't I? So, anyway, uh, once you get all 7 Chaos Emeralds, you can... Uh, still choose what power you want during the forms of that specific uh, emerald powers as far as I'm aware. So, I would have liked to be able to explain something else for that matter though, but honestly guys, that's just as far as I can say about it. Although, relatively speaking though, about the fact that I'm basically almost finishing up everything uh, for the likes of the forms of the Sunshine Toy and Mario Kart Tour, by the way. So, I just want to classify that. So, now I was expecting about the fact that I was originally trying to able to get myself the, uh, uh, Toadette's Sailor outfit, but here's one little downside about the forms of that particular cosmetic character in mind. And Sophie tells me about the fact that her special item called the Mushroom Cannon, to me feels pretty useless, all things considered, because not only it does manage to hinder my uh, defense move, but it's also about the fact that it can able to help out a lot of computer players if they somehow manage to obtain the mushrooms, so... That's the only drawback I can feel like anyway, so... And something tells me about the fact that... Oh, nice! I got myself my glorious amount of coins, so that should be all pretty swell. So here we are, if you couldn't tell already, we're now in the actual ship itself, so because of this though... I don't think it's possible for me to able to actually complete uh, complete everything in journey forms within the ship though, but I suppose maybe at some point in tomorrow and possibly next Monday as well, depending on time. So with that being said, I think we should probably end things off at this point just about right here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars, and that's what appears to be about the fact that we're about to able to continue exploring for the ship by experiencing some different rooms and all the other stuff. So I'll see you guys until tomorrow. Later, fellas.